everyone, and back from a two-week hiatus. This is the Omega Files, and I'm your host, Dr. Freedom. Unfortunately, I do have to announce right off the bat, please don't get heartbroken. Please do not soak your computers with tears. But there will... Hello? Hello? What was that? Uh, my dad. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well... You better tell them there's not going to be an Omega Files next week. Yeah, that's basically what I was going to say. Um, yeah, I have to work on the 22nd, so unfortunately, yeah, we're going to have to skip yet another week. But um, as promised, I was there were supposed to be two more people here. Unfortunately, for reasons I don't know, they can't show up. But I'll read their synopsis rather quickly anyway. Yeah, this is the episode where I sat down a couple weeks ago and told you all, sit down, jot down a synopsis that you would do for a Doctor Who spinoff. And, okay, joining me on the panel tonight is Bill. Hello. Ross. Hello. Nightwing. Hey, guys. AJ. Hello. And Josh. Hello. Okay, so I've been really sitting down trying, you know, image, what little time I have. I've been trying to read all these, and there's some of them who are rather good, and there's some of them, who, what is that? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Something escaped. Huh? And, you know, plus, I've been putting together you know, the adventures of Dr. Freedom and Eric. You know, but I've also been trying to read everybody else's synopsis. And I can't, you know, I can't believe you know, really, really good stuff. You know, I'm, I'm really shocked. You know, the audience really did their you know, two bits for this one. You know, but OK, let's go ahead and get started because uh, we've got a lot of ground to cover. So I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna start with the guy who I asked to write down a synopsis, a simple paragraph, a character, and he sent me basically Frank Herbert's Dune trilogy, or whatever. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay, Bill, go ahead and give us an overview of, you know, what you sat down and proposed for a spinoff. Okay, well, what I proposed for a spinoff was something that would basically bridge. The classic series starting after time, of, uh, starting after uh, Genesis of the Daleks, and tying it into the events of the Time War and the modern series, and also kind of explaining little things like how the Daleks end up on Kemble. Um, but really, it's not so much about the Daleks as it is about the Thals. Okay. And that is a good question. We we literally do not know what happened to the Thals. They, the last time I believe we saw them was Genesis of the Daleks. And then they just drop out of existence. Uh, can you give us a brief idea of what's going on with the Thals? Or? Well, well, yeah, basically I was looking at, you know, after the fourth Doctor left Scaro. God, I almost said Gallifrey for some dumb reason. After he left Scaro... The Thals were left with trying to basically rebuild their civilization, but knowing darn well that those Daleks are down there in the bunker. After all, the Doctor did say that, you know, he may have set them back as much of a, as a thousand years, so they have this looming fear that they might return, and I went with the idea that there were probably even some surviving Khaleds. And in fact, in this idea... You basically have two factions of Khaleds. Most of them are basically done with this war, and they're trying to integrate with the Thals and rebuild their world. Whereas some of the Khaleds are still very much loyalists, and these are actually working with a certain Dalek Supreme who was one of the few that wasn't in the bunker when it got blown up. And the Daleks side of things is very much in the background. In everything that I... I wrote down for Dr. Freedom, the Daleks are used very little. They're, it's basically one Dalek for most of that who works completely through Khaled operatives as they're trying to sabotage what the Thals are doing to rebuild. And as the Thals basically reinitiate their space program, they try to sabotage that as well. Ah, okay. So we're looking at yeah, what happened to the Thals? You know, did they get a chance to rebuild all that? Because, like I said, they just literally popped out and you know popped out of existence. I, I would really love to see a story that brings them back. You know, and we find out did they get wiped out? Did they go extinct? You know, where did they end up? Did they end up on another planet? If any of them survived? Yeah, it, it's a good idea. I, I really loved it, Bill. I loved reading it. Thanks. Um, 
And let me see, so far you had, what was it, like four seasons of this thing already playing? Well, uh, yeah, you've, you've you got it in front of you. If not, I've got it here, and it was four seasons. Oh, okay, because that's what I remember off the top of my head. Uh, hang on, let me take a look. I, I do have it right here. Yep, uh, yeah, limited show of four series. And I love it. You had series one being the aftermath, series two, the resurrection, series three, rumors of war, and then series four oops, was the future's uncertain. And like I said, it basically is like, wow, you know, <laughs> I only asked for a paragraph and I got a saga. You know, it's really, really well written. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Now, before we move on, let me let me bring in one of the ones that were submitted from the Peanut Gallery, so they get a chance to read there. Uh, this was sent in by Astrofist. His idea was a, sh a story called Unit Thirteen, and basically the setting with this was it's the year twenty twenty five. The Cybermen, the style of Silver Anniversary episode, battle the new version of Cybermen for the conquest of Earth. Doctor is nowhere to be found. And utilizing a time machine created by a current scientific advisor, advisor, members of the unit pulled from the past, present, and future, create a team of 13 highly skilled members to battle the oncoming threat of a cyber war on Earth. And basically, all right, now here's what he's got listed for the cast. Uh, you know, I'm assuming, you know, he's meaning they're going to have to other, have other actors step in for a few of them. Uh, he's got Kate Stewart, the Brigadier, Martha Jones, Mickey Smith, uh, Sergeant Benton, now General Benton, uh, Elizabeth Shaw, uh, Brigadier Winifred Bombera, uh, Private Steve Gray, Dr. Jane Smith, Dr. Harry Sullivan, Admiral, yeah, sorry, I lost my place there, Admiral Ben Jackson and his wife, Polly Jackson. So definitely going to have to have a whole lot of replacements in that cast, but I just thought it was really intriguing because it blends the old with the new. You know, so it wasn't a bad idea, you know, in a concept. Okay, Ross, let's go through yours. Okay, um, my spin-off is set in the 52nd century, and it's about a group of smugglers and traders that work for Dorian Moldavar in, in the uh, Moldavarium, and it's basically set on their journey as they travel sort of across the universe, but it's... On their travels, they're sort of like meeting and doing jobs for Dorian, where they encounter st like characters such as like Santarans and eventually to the Daleks. But um, the way I sort of set this out is like it's set in that single time zone, so that we can get other characters in, such as the Doctor in the future times. But that's mainly it. Yeah, I, I liked yours because it kind of had a mixture of a whole bunch of different series. It was almost like part privateer, a little bit of Firefly, maybe. And, yeah. And, you know, yeah, they're totally independent. And also they're working for Dorian, you know, before he became a head in a box. Yeah, before the Dorian met the Doctor, I sort of explores the area where you understand what debt Dorian did to, to be the friend of the Doctor. And I really like the yeah, the idea of it because yeah, like I said, instead of being tied to any one particular thing, you know, other than Dorian, you know, these guys pretty much go out and do what they got to do to survive in the fifty second century. And I, I, you know, it's like it's not a fixed storyline. You can go pretty much anywhere with it. I, I love that. Okay, next up on the docket, let's take a look at this real quick here. All right, and we'll read the Fez Man's real quick since he was supposed to be with us and couldn't make it. Okay, his was called Genesis, not to be confused with Genesis of the Daleks. Genesis tells the, the origin of Rassilon in the early days of Gallifrey before the Doctor. You'll see what Rassilon has to do in order to achieve power. Rassilon was a good guy at the beginning, but it towards, starts to become more and more corrupt in order to become the ruler of Gallifrey, similar to the Master being good, then turning evil eventually over the course of time. And basically you'll see what Rassilon did with Omega, and you'll go up to that whole early storyline of basically it's Gallifrey, the early years. And I thought that was an interesting take, because that's something we've never seen. You know, how would they fix out that classic conundrum? Because originally it was, back in the old days, it was all Omega doing the work, 
And then Rassilon came along in the fourth Doctor era, and he suddenly became, you know, the big legendary guy. So, all right, good work on that. All right, next we'll go to Nightwing. Yeah, um, I went for like a, because I like the Satellite 5 time thing, you know, the game station in series, well, the, the, the uh, when, it, when they brought it back in 2005. Uh, well, six is it? Two thousand six. Two thousand five. Two thousand five. Um, I like the the idea of the game station and satellite five, but one of the forgotten members of the team was a an engineer. He um he's almost killed in the Dalek attack, but um survives when Rose destroys them, um using the time vortex. He um <clears throat> he somehow develops a power to uh create mechs like robot mechs out of matter or um you know like out of random things around him and um yeah when the support team come to look for survivors he manages to escape and then develops like a similar like a grudge on the doctor after hearing about him and um this is really going to be like his own series but you don't really see the doctor until like near the end he's in his current form you know the 12th doctor uh, Pete Capaldi, and he becomes a companion. But this is when Clara is on like a break, similar to that what happened with Amy and Rory. Okay, yeah, I can see it. Um, so... But but he's still he's still able to have his you know mech powers and yeah. So basically, yeah, you're using this spinoff series to introduce a future companion, which I think is totally innovative. You know, it's something that's never been done before. You know, yes. having, instead of bringing back a former companion, giving them a series, you're looking at a, a guy, you know, who's out there doing this, but he's going to become a companion of the Doctor when the series comes to an end. Yeah, he's partly a villain, but he's partly a compa- like a good guy. Like, to begin with, he's a villain, but then he's a good guy, if you get what I mean. You get, little glimpses, you get little glimpses of the Doctor, like, through the series, but you don't really, he doesn't have any interaction with the Doctor till the end of the series. Okay, so, so yeah, originally he's he's out hunting the doctor like you know kind of like a Moby Dick scenario, <laughs> but then by the time yes. he meets him, he does a, has a total turnaround. Yes. Okay, I like it. Yeah. Don't worry if you guys want to comment on any of these, please go jump in. I guess not. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just listening right now. Yeah. So oh, yeah. A little subtlety <clears throat> first. All right. Next up, uh, out from the peanut gallery, and this was sent in by Happy Days Nine Nine Nine, and I found this one to be very very interesting. The Foreman Chronicles, a series which catalogs what Susan has done since we last saw her, and we're echoing it with someone. The first episode would feature Carol Ann Ford as Susan battling a threat to Earth. It would also set up where and who she lives with. At the end of the first episode, she would be mortally wounded, saving the Earth, and would regenerate. A new character would take on the role, though Carol Ann Ford would remain on to narrate the remainder of the series. And as the series went on and Susan's life continues, it would include meetings with characters from both the old and new Doctor Who. All righty. You, you oh, know what would be great for that? Who? Have, 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 Susan, have the newly regenerated Susan run into... Um, oh, oh, crap, what was her name? I, I'm drawing a blank on it. Uh, the doctor's daughter. Jenny. 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 Oh, yeah, we're echoing over you, Nightwing. Okay, we just <laughs> lost Nightwing. That didn't <laughs> sound like a great ending. Choking. <laughs> that was pleasing. Okay. By the way, I'm not editing that out. Good. <laughs> 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 he yeah, at least he got his synopsis in before someone killed him. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I do not know. I'm almost afraid to ask. Who was threatening to choke him? His dad. Was that his dad? I think that was his dad. <laughs> oh, 
I was waiting for his dad to give him laundry tips. (laughs) (laughs) No, that that would have been Harry. Um, But yeah, it was like all of a sudden I'm hearing, that was the last one, now I'm going to choke you. It's like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Now you're screaming, wait a minute! We started off on spinoffs and things took a dark turn. Okay, let's move on to AJ. <laughs> All right, um, my idea, I don't actually read it now, sort of not that good, but regardless, I'll move on. It's called Foreman and Smith. It's um, a mashup of uh, the Sarah Jane adventures after Sarah Jane has died with Susan Foreman. Um, takes place after Sarah Jane Adventures and the death of Sarah herself, sadly. The main characters are Luke and his friends, um, and Susan after the death of her son. A few weeks later, left on the desk in Susan's house, is left an old-looking wooden box. Opening it up, finds a vortex manipulator and a card from the doctor. My dear Susan, I'm truly sorry for what happened to your life and for the loss of your son. I give you this device which is pre-programmed to take you to the early 21st century and a young man and his friends who need your help. When she straps it on, she's propelled back through time and lands in the attic in Luke's house. After freaking him out, she hands him a card from her pocket. Dearest Luke, uh, the woman standing before you is my granddaughter. Her name is Susan. She is not a replacement for your mum, but has recently lost her own son and now needs help trying to change small events that will lead to a hellish future and constant war with the Daleks. If you're thinking she's nothing more than a frail old woman, you're far from being right. You'll soon discover the Doctor. Shortly after finishing the letter, there's a massive explosion, and Mr. Smith goes nuts with warnings. The Sycorics are back, looking for vengeance uh, for their lost brothers. Cue the theme music. Very, very nice. You see, that's one thing that um, I had people attacking me about when I mentioned why I wasn't susan foreman in our alleged 50th anniversary and they're like no one would know who she is yet i've got all these submissions asking for carol ann ford to reprise the role or bring back the character of susan and i love the way you did it you know where it takes place you know in a time you know since we did have the eighth doctor adventures canonized it takes you know it's a perfect fit where, you know, she could easily step in, you know, and she's lost someone close to her. Luke's lost someone close to her, close to him. And, you know, these two now have to pick up the pieces and move on. And plus the fact that there were so many people who were upset when they discontinued the Sarah Jane Adventures, even though I do understand RTD's reasons for not doing so. But at the same time, I really think they should have went with the policy, the show must go on. And I think they should have moved forward. And I really like the way you did it. I really do. Thank you. Oh, okay. I, I, I have to agree, Brian. That uh, what with with uh, the Sarah Jane Adventures. Even though I didn't really care for it, I watched a couple episodes here and there. I always wondered why wouldn't they pick up those characters and move them into something else, the ones that were still remaining. And uh, I think he's got a great idea as far as like put Susan in the role of what Sarah Jane's character was. You see, one of my ideas I had a while back, and mine was totally kind of out there, was they. I was really hoping they would do something like you could put Perry Brown on 21st, 21st Century Earth. And what happens is she just got back to Earth. Here's a woman who's from the you know mid-80s. And the children not only have to acclimatize her to the 21st century, but they also have to get used to the fact that someone else new has come along. And then she has to get used to life, you know, 30 years on, on Earth. And and that was my idea, was to put Perry, you know, Perry Brown in that situation. But I I really like the idea of Carol Ann Ford doing it as well. It's so funny to me that you were saying that, because I was having this other idea, a much more absurd idea, of course, spinning through my head about how (laughs) there could be a show about, you know, I think it would only be one season long, but basically Perry seeing a shrink because of uh, horrid memories of being choked by a Time Lord. <laughs> um, is it going to be like a Life on Mars sort of thing? 
Uh, matter of fact, that's what they'll name the series. Choked by a Time Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how long that would last. You know? <laughs> I can see this now. Then again, if Colin Baker choked me, I'd probably have recurring nightmares for the rest of my life. Okay, now this one here was submitted by Mid-Atlantic Gal. And she said she'd love to join us, but she doesn't have a webcam or a microphone as yet. And hers is, takes a whole new take that I didn't think anybody would even think of. The Master Chronicles. The Master, after surviving a time storm that sent him off to another galaxy at, in the end of time, is in a space station hospital recovering from his botched resurrection. An alien attack forces a regeneration which kills the drumming in his head. Fully restored, he steals a spaceship, but a storm causes it to crash on a tropical-like planet where he meets a female professor, Elizabeth Stone, and her younger male colleague, uh, ex-soldier Nicholas Benton, grandson of f former Sergeant Benton, studying the life forms on this planet. They take a liking to him, help to repair his ship, and the three take off for a series of adventures. And this would all take place in the very first episode. And the master now struggles between his unlikely... Hang on, where did I just lose my place here? Oh, oh I hate it when it jumps like that. Oh, there we go. Between his unlikely friendship with his two new companions and a desire to take over the universe and finally destroy his nemesis, the Doctor. In this spinoff, she said she'd bring back to Ronnie, the meddling monk, to cause trouble, and some classic enemies like the Ice Warriors, the Giant Spiders, who we know as the Eight Legs, the Mara, maybe the Celestial Toymaker. Um, Nissa can make an appearance, and we'd have the two- or three-part episode, which finally deals with the Master taking over her father's body. Interesting. Okay. I thought it was a fascinating concept, you know, you know pretty out there. Oh, Ryan, oh, oh my god, Nightwing, you're still alive! I, uh, um, excuse that, I, <clears throat> my dad asked me to do something, but I was, I was talking to you guys, so, um, I told him I'll do it in a little while, and he, yeah, you heard. Oh, I'm sorry about that, I thought he was gonna kill you, okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, he wouldn't do anything like that. It's just yeah. that I don't get on with him. <laughs> <laughs> that somebody expected that somebody expected he'd start giving you laundry tips. <laughs> right. um, just just a request. Could you edit that out? Just because I don't want to listen to that tomorrow. Sure, and I watch. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, well, what have I missed? Apart from <laughs> Sorry, what have I missed? Um nothing much. We just went over a couple other synopsises. You know, no you didn't miss much. Oh good. Okay. Well. Um, next up on the agenda, let's go to for Josh's. I, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to submit it. Uh, but go ahead. Um, idea I had was 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 called Alternate, which basically we never really get to see other Time Lords aside from the Master and the Ronnie and the Doctor really use a, a TARDIS. And the idea I had was I'd like like you know some first timers taking a, a, a TARDIS out. And something happens, they get knocked into an alternate timeline, and they got to figure out a way to get back. With this, you could uh, have a TARDIS with a functioning chameleon circuit explain or elaborate on Time Lord ideas and, and, and past, and have fun toying with alternate timeline stuff that, that we've seen with Doctor Who. Like you could, uh, you know, change up Daleks, Cybermen. We've kind of seen that with the Cybermen with, with uh, what was it? Uh, first season of David Tennant, but you know I'd really like to see like lesser known villains be used. Like you know, uh, I'd love to see the Sea Devils in an aspect of like say they've been able to conquer the Earth, or uh, you know use other villains. That's basically my idea, and they're just trying to get back to their regular timeline. So you're basically saying you're going to be using the they see me rolling uh, idea. I'm sorry? So you're basically just saying these are young Time Lords taking the TARDISes out for the first time, or TARDI, or whatever, how, what the plural of TARDIS is. Uh, but you're basically saying they're going to be, um, they're going to be using the quote, they see me rolling. Oh, like a JK rolling ID, you mean? No, uh, no, no, they see me rolling, as in the, they see me rolling. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that. I, I just kind of like the idea that, like, again, we don't really see many, we don't see the Doctor bumping into too many other TARDISes in the show. And, and again, I'd love to really see, you know, like a TARDIS crew, actually, 
you always hear, you know, well, there should be more people piloting a TARDIS than just one person, but the doctor gets away with it. Yeah. And I just thought it would be interesting to see how the TARDIS should be properly flown. And then I've always liked the idea of like you get stuck in an alternate timeline and you're having a struggle of getting out of it. That's basically what I was aiming for. A little like sliders. Uh, yeah, you could compare it to sliders, but the only difference is it's not Earth based. Yeah. Yeah, because I've been wanting to see another TARDIS in the show. Closest thing we came was the Lodger, and oh god, we still have yet to get an explanation on what was going on with that thing. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I've been wanting to see another TARDIS pop up in the show. It, it would really, really, you know, throw the whole fan base for a loop. Well, one of the things I think they could do with a group of Time Lords on a show would, you know, we we get little tastes of of Gallifrey and whatnot, but we never really get like really specific history you know like you'll get bits about omega or rassilon here and there but they could really expand on more gallifrey stuff with a show like this as well as like i said you know more things about a tardis that you don't generally get with doctor who i know it, it, i like it it's, it's nice it's original it's something that nobody's thought of mm. i'm shocked anyone remembers sliders <laughs> i like sliders hey i happen to like white castle <laughs> Not that kind of slider. <laughs> oh, <you> mean crystal. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, for the yeah for you folks who don't know what we're talking about slider, go look it up. We're talking about a series that started out with an entire original cast and wound up with one guy left over at the end. Yep. <laughs> Sounds like Torchwood. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you lost everybody. Here. Well. Except for Gwen, because Gwen's freaking awesome and she's Welsh. Yes. <laughs> okay, next up on that. Now, this was from Ryan Nicholson, and I'm doing it before we get to Ryan's. By the way, Ryan just joined us, everybody. Oh. Hello. A little bit delayed there. Hi, Ryan. Now, this is from someone named Ryan Nicholson. The Ace Adventures. Ace decides to leave the Doctor and get back to reality while on Bannerman Road, Clyde and Ronnie have to say goodbye to where their best friends. Ace, Clyde, and Ronnie must now fight against an entity that controls children, and Ace decides to buy number 13, and the team are reborn. And basically it goes from there, it goes, uh, Ace, she plays a strong female role, she's a lot more feisty character than just Sarah, but isn't as youthful as she was in the classic series. She would, of course, be played by Sophie Aldred. Clyde and Ronnie, they've changed a lot since we last saw them in The Man Who Never Was. Ronnie's gotten a job as a nurse, and Clyde helps out as, at a homeless shelter. They become more independent since Sarah, Sky, and Luke moved away, but they still child, they still show childish characteristics, which makes them something the younger audience can still relate to. So, once again, it seems like, you know, there's a lot of people out there demanding that they pick up where they left off on the Sarah Jane adventures. I've been finding that a lot. Okay, yeah. now let's go for Ryan from Tasmania. All right, Ryan, what was your idea for a spinoff? Um, my idea was something that, um, a lot of people, I think, have been wanting, uh, to see since the show came back, and that is the Time War spin-off. Um, of course, only last year we did find out that it wasn't McGann or Eccleston that fought the Time War, it was, in fact, a completely new entity, which we've only seen fully for one episode and briefly in two um and um we don't really get to see a lot of this character so what I was thinking is there is a perfectly good reason um other than the fact that this guy had killed the time lords and the Daleks there was a perfectly good reason why he was repressed, and he was a lot darker before in when he fought the Time War. So, um, my, my series basically was going to pick up where Night of the Doctor left off. Um, he pretty much um, flies straight from Khan to Gallifrey, and... Um, <coughs> is pretty much immediately put into action um, and 
we get to see a few familiar faces. Um, the Master, which I believe would have been a younger version of the, the Yana incarnation before he was somehow uh, evicted from the Time War or for whatever reason. And um, you probably would have seen the Rani uh, as a scientist and um, trying to develop weapons for the Time War. And uh, it, she would have been a, um, a major part of the cast for this one as well. Uh, you would have seen Romana, Leela, a lot of um, recurring characters. And also, uh, what was going to be interesting about this was you would actually see what was supposed to happen with the Doctor killing all the, um, the Time Lords and the Daleks at once. You see, that's another thing that a lot of people have been screaming out for, yet, you know, to quote our beloved current showrunner whose name shall not be spoken because it is too sacred to step on. Hmm. Romana. I, I'm not kidding. I, I've been hearing folks, old and new, wanting to see Lala Ward come back as Romana, yet they won't do it because, as our showrunner says, no one gives a toss. But people are asking about it. Mm -hmm. And... You know, it would be an interesting way to find out how... Now, here's what I picture. It eventually ends with a falling out between Romana and the Doctor because the Doctor has gone way too far. Something, you know, he really did that was really nasty. You know, before he, you know, did the whole moment thing and got to talk to Rose Tyler, who really wasn't Rose Tyler and all that babble. Yeah, also, when, go ahead. Uh, when I was in very early... Um, stages of planning this. It was originally going to start with the Doctor killing the Sisters of Khan because if he could, if they could turn him into a warrior, what was stopping someone? What what was stopping them from doing it to someone else who was more powerful, who could have been a better warrior than the Doctor was? Okay, so you're talking. He went totally unhinged. Pretty He's much, yeah. To yeah, totally insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would explain a lot more as to why the you know the other doctors repress his memory. Hmm. Because it it just seemed very off to me that the later doctors would completely and totally repress him, just based on the. I mean, David Tennant. Uh, I think it was um the tenth doctor in, the doctor said that um that he was the Doctor on the day... Oh, no, uh, the 11th Doctor said he, he was the Doctor on the day that it wasn't possible to get it right. But, um... Yeah, he, he just didn't seem like he was a warrior. But he, I, I just thought he would have been completely and utterly warrior-like before the before Day of the Doctor. And so, something happens... And, um, he, like a, um, I don't know, Leela probably would die or get brutally injured in battle. And, um, th this could, you know, be a turning point for the Doctor, uh, where he decides that it's just time to end it all. Oh, okay. I, I have two things to say on that. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, first off, um, the master was exterminated in the um, movie, the eight, uh, the Doctor Who movie, and probably would have survived, like come back and regenerated. But um, and then the second thing is that um, wasn't Romana stuck in what was that place called? East Space. East Space. Yeah, um, you got to remember though, she she does come back to the regular universe multiple times in big. Yeah. And uh, was um, wasn't it stated in one of the episodes, uh, Santa Drums or Last of the Time Lords, that the Master was resurrected for the Time War? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, yeah. I forgot he, about that. And he ran away too. Besides, the, the Master has been killed more times, I think, than Davros, and he keeps coming back. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that then, killed, um, and killed later on in the. Um, he was killed late. He was killed and then killed like later on again as the same person. Let me in, see. You know, he John Sim. And he's been burned. He's been um, uh, zapped into the black hole, the Eye of Harmony, twice, I think. Uh, yeah, it's exterminated. Like, yeah, he's been exterminated Shots. by the Daleks. Yeah, it's like yeah, he just keeps. He's like a bad penny. He keeps turning up everywhere. Hmm. Uh, I was even thinking that um. The the master, when he is first resurrected, um, j just to add to the fact why the doctor doesn't recognize him in um, Utopia, he sort of is having the problem that uh, the John Sim master had in End of Time, where he keeps fluctuating between a um, a skeletal form and. Yeah. Well, you yeah. got to remember, though, the Yana form was completely human. He had gone through a chameleon arch. And then when he opened the watch back up, he became the master again. Yeah, so yeah but, you know, that. chances are that that Yana form was Gallifreyan before being human. Yeah. I mean, for example, yeah. his whole thing about having been found as a child was probably a memory that he created. Exactly. It was probably a false memory. Yeah, I, I can agree yeah. with that. So, yeah, it, it's an interesting concept, though, because it would help fill in some gaps, you know, that a lot of the older fans have been wondering, you know, what the hell happened to this person, what happened to this person, and all that. So it kind of bridges the gap between the two shows. And the movie a little bit. Yeah, although it was really bad. Yeah. The, yeah. the 96 movie, the only thing that kept me watching it was Paul McGann. That was about it. Mm. <laughs> to be honest, mm. because when I was watching this, I'm like, What? <laughs> the Eye of Harmony is where? You know. Mm. Uh, you, you see, that's what I love about the new series. I have to say this. They kept the fact that the Eye of Harmony is in the center of the TARDIS, but we can't keep the fact the Doctor's half human. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm kind of glad that they did away with that. I prefer him being a proper Time Lord. Why? Mm. I don't like the idea of him being human. It's just, it's great that he's this alien and he's mysterious, and when you make him half human, I think that it tells too much about him. It's like his dad was drunk and ended up on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> or his mom. Get out there! He was a time lord out looking to party. <laughs> right, I, I agree with you, though. That I would like to have seen an explanation as to him being half human. The reason I think is, is that would really explain why he's so attracted to Earth more than anything else. Real simple. Exactly. That's why he you know, found himself uh, hiding the hand of Omega on Earth, which we found out in Remembrance of the Daleks. He hid his own granddaughter on Earth out of all the places in the universe. And, you know, it would also explain but, why you know, he was rejected yeah. by Time Lord Society. Well, on, on the other hand, here's an alien race that are not the Time Lords who are out to get him who resemble their people enough not to be kind of freaky for his young granddaughter. <laughs> mm. It's weird that he hides his own granddaughter on Earth, probably the most most visited planet on, in the whole universe. <laughs> because seriously, how many times has Earth been attacked? I'm still trying to figure out when he, why anyone would invade here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I, maybe I for the same it. reason that we go to Iraq, they're after the oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They want plastic, and this is the only place to get it. See, that explains why the Nestines kept coming back. Yes. It's, um, it's very simple. Earth is inhabited to one of the most dangerous beings, and that is Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, want to, yeah, they want to get his DNA, mix it with Bruce Lee's, and create the ultimate warrior. <laughs> I've got an idea. Another spin-off. Chuck oh. Norris meets the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and they join forces, and Chuck Norris is able to beat Daleks with, with just a poke. <laughs> <laughs> now, like over so there, because, you know, it's like, come on, there'd be no challenge at all then. Yeah, but it'd be worth it. A Dalek shot me once. 
And after five grueling, painful days, the Dalek died. (laughs) 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 Oh, God. Okay, here's the remainder of the, you know, submissions for those who weren't on the panel. Let's let's run through them. There's there's about four of them. And this one's very short. The first one is a series called The Under Gallery. This was submitted by Sheila Friend. The cast would consist of the curator, I'm, I'm assuming is played by Tom Baker, Osgood, the young, you know, lady scientist we were introduced to in the 8th anniversary special. Uh Lady Christina de Souza. And you know who we remember from Planet, you know, the, was it Planet of the Dead? That's right, that's what it was. Yeah. And Kelnor, who is a Zygon. And the first episode would be titled "Bring Me the Mona Lisa." The curator sends the team off to Paris with a very difficult task: replace the Mona Lisa in the Louvre with a copy of the masterpiece that was actually painted by Leo that doesn't have "This is a fake" painted on the back of it. <laughs> so. That was her brief synopsis for her first episode and whatnot. I saw but, this one when I was looking through the comments. Yeah. Okay, the next one is by William Medina. Now, he goes, all right, this is what he has. We we started the museum with Kate Stewart talking to the curator, played by Tom Baker, about the past. Credit titles are going to be called The Lost Chronicles. We see either photos or items where the narrative starts and go to the story with the Doctor being different actors like McGann, Tennant, Smith, etc. Some stories can be from Big Finish, but it shows us some answers as to what happened to past companions such as Lila Romana, Victoria, Ace, and it gives old and new fans the best of both worlds. Some stories can be more than one episode for the so that the story will not feel rushed, hint, hint. Now this story can be based by, these stories can also be written by like Mark Gatiss, Nicholas Briggs, and he goes, what do you think? Would this be too costly? I'm like, no. <laughs> That's just me. Okay, now this one's way out there. That's why I saved this one for last. Now also, now, all right, before I forget it, now someone submitted a one-liner and I forgot to write down their name. Why don't we see the furthered adventures of Jackson Lake and Rosalita, who we remember from the next Doctor? Oh, like, yes. Other than I can see, good luck getting a hold of, you know, um, oh, heck, my, David Morrissey. He's busy fighting zombies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could see him again as that kind, loving Jackson Lake guy after he was the governor. Oh, man. <laughs> mm, that that would be interesting. Maybe he'll be the other doctor that the other doctor tries to forget. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> With an iPad. Arr. <laughs> That's sort of interesting because um, earlier this week, I had a plan to um, do some action figure adventures, and um, for the because uh, I was going to do four stories for each Doctor, and for the tenth Doctor one, I was actually going to do a series of adventures where Jackson like uh, was traveling with the Doctor. Ah, okay. Because at the end of the next, uh, at the end of the next Doctor, you never really see what happens. They just walk off, and that's about it. Christmas dinner. Yeah, they had yeah. Christmas dinner. Plus, you got to remember, Jackson had a son. He can go as well. Or better yet, here, here's one. You know, have it where the Doctor, you know, his son winds up being companion of the Doctor. Yeah. Hmm. Or you could have an interesting um, take on that theme. Yeah. Uh, I tried to, like, pick times in the show where each Doctor, um, there, there was a gap, and, um, like, massive gaps, and, um, j- just tried to fill them in as best I can. For example, um, the, the second Doctor in, uh, my story is actually... It, is actually from after the war games and um it's it's going to be um that the a portal opens up near Gallifrey and the doctor's being sent right towards it but the, but um the time lords like that they're fearing that the doctor's going to die cuz 
they, they can see how much of an asset they could be uh, he could be to them so that they're trying to desperately stop him from falling into that portal but uh, it happens anyway and they try to extract him and there are some some very sinister fellows inside the portal I won't mention who at this time okay all right now here's the last one that I have and this one I saved it for last because this is way out there this is by Zach Hessemer and the title of this program is going to be called Vestige and here's the synopsis in the year 196 Vingentillion which is 10 to the 36 power uh huh the word Dalek means nothing to no one. The Daleks exist in the years long since forgotten. But now something strange has happened, it happened in a tiny sector of space. The radiation from a pro prolonged supernova caused by the hand of Omega has finally diminished in sector Gamma Z Alpha. Everything left of the system that was once there is either dust or rubble, except something that against all scientific law should not have survived. A planet. The planet, designated D5 Gamma Z Alpha, which is Scaro, has impossibly survived the supernova and was shielded by the radiation from scans. A few, all right, the few who notice start to speculate and eventually investigate the planet. But the mystery of Scarrow is the only of the secondary story as the primary story, which is not overshadowed by the foreboding of the Daleks' return, takes place many, many years later and revolves around the established settlements on the planet Scarrow. These people live in ignorance of Scarrow's ominous past. Although much of the surface is still devastated by radiation, a few areas around the globe have been terraformed into different biomes in which only two people inhabit at one time due to the Shadow Proclamation Protocol. There are six stations, each a different biome, with a total of 12 researchers on the planet. Each facility has a different purpose and each person is an expert in many geological and astrophysical fields. The planet is now heated and lit using artificial incandescence technology within the atmosphere. Now, all right, yeah, due to the sun's death. Every series is over the span of two months, as every two months the 12 researchers change shifts and are randomly reassigned with another researcher to a different station. This gives a lot of potential for different relationships and different situations in interchanging ecosystems. Vestige would work correlatively with the hiatus of the Daleks on Doctor Who, so the BBC can still use the Daleks in the years of their absence on Doctor Who elsewhere, not showing them directly on screen, but making references and allusions to them. It would also give an insight into the future culture and system of universal law through the Shadow Proclamation, as well as exploring how Scarrow survived the Hand of Omega, let alone the Time War and the vestige of Scarrow's past. When the series ultimately ends, it would not close the storyline, but would only leave way for the ruin of all characters, with the final scene being a transmission from the Daleks. This would be continued in a Doctor Who story that would show the return of the Daleks after years of them being off-screen and foreshadowing their return on Vestige. Vestige would officially end on Doctor Who, and for all answering the questions it posed, such as the mystery of Scarrow, and closing up the character's storylines. So, kind of an off-the-wall there when involving the remnant of Scarrow. Way off in the far-flung future. Which, uh, that's why I kind of saved that one for last. It lost me. It did. It lost me too. But <laughs> just uh, so I just got another Reminds idea. Me of Minecraft is a different biomes. Maybe that's where he was inspired by. I, yeah. I just got another idea for another show. Um, when you guys were talking about Jackson Lake, um, after the Doctor leaves, um, Captain Jack shows up and starts talking to uh, Jackson Lake and gets him to join Torchwood. Back then. Ah, huh. interesting. Okay. That is interesting. Well, that is a big question. Yeah, you know, where was Torchwood during all that stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it would answer a few questions of what happened to them during that whole affair. But... Yeah, and you have um, John Barrowman back in probably a whole new series of you know 1888 or whatever it is, Torchwood. Plus, you could throw in the pattern Rogue. True. So there you go, two, two spin-offs mm -hmm. in one thing. Which, that's the one everybody really wants to also hope see. It's kind of, you know, I kind of left it as a guy. I said, look, I didn't want to see any about the pattern Oscar row because that's pretty much a given, that, that everyone wants that one done. Because, you know, it would really work, but once again, you have to look at the fact two of your three main stars are going to be in prosthetics every episode, 
That means they got to come in like an hour and a half, two hours before shooting, get made up, and then stay an hour, hour and a half after to get it all taken off. So mm -hmm. there is a story way around that though, with a perception filter for both characters. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember that one. I forgot. It. Actually, I did forget about it a bit. Yeah, but now you mentioned. Now I remember it. Yeah. Where you get yeah. perception filter. It must, cost, it must cost the BBC a lot of money just to make a Sontaran and a, and a Silurian for like a couple of hours a day. Well, it could, yeah, because once again, you got to pay the actor to come in early and pay the actor to leave late. Well, yeah. The, as well as the, the money. special effects artists to make the masks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Then you have your That's effects right. artists. Because um, back during the days of Deep Space Nine, they were proposing doing an entirely Klingon themed series. It was going to based off. Um, if anyone remembers the Ritaran, which was a uh, Martok ship, you know, for a flashback for you Star Trek fans, that was actually going to be a pilot for another TV series. But they dumped it because of the fact that oh great, the entire cast has to come in, be put in prosthetics. Wear 15 pounds of vinyl for how many hours a day? <laughs> and then you have to pay them to stay and take that all off. Plus, you know, you have to pay Michael Westmore's crew to do all the, you know, the, the um, wake up makeup effects and whatnot. So it would be not really financially viable. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I'd still love to see him do like maybe just a mini series with the Pattern Oscar Row Gang, you know, give them their own one. You know, mm -hmm. just to fill in the gap, because you see, the reason why I did this is because we have not had even the proposal for a spinoff since roughly 2009. Yeah. Because, you know, when Sarah Jane Adventures ended, you know, due to the tragic death of you know, Elizabeth Sladen, that pretty mm -hmm. much ended that series. Torchwood after Miracle Day is dead. I'll put it to you this way. That bridge has not only been burned, it's been bombed out fallen in, eroded into the ocean, and fish are doing the nasty in its broken remains. Wow. I'm not kidding. I do not see Torchwood returning at all. Not after uh, Miracle Day. Miracle Day yeah. was bad. Um, yeah, but yeah. chance of Jack coming back, Brian? I'd love to see it. John Barrowman's more than willing to do it. And as I said before, um, the guy who does Arrow and Great, his name escapes me right now, he even told Barrowman that if he wanted the time off and they asked him to do the 50th anniversary special, boom, he had it, no questions asked. He was actually written to A Good Man Goes to War, but he couldn't yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I Andrew Cronenberger. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew Cronenberger, who's one of the executive producers of the show Arrow. Matter of fact, he's a diehard Hoovian, and that's why he also hired Alex Kingston to appear on the series. Hmm. Which is why I'm just, really, really hoping, fingers crossed, that Matt Smith gets a phone call in the near future to play a villain on that show. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I would love to see it. Matt Smith is a villain for this, even if it's just one episode. Or who, would what if like he... see, who would you like to see what? him play? I, I can't, you know, like I said, I'm not really familiar with comic book lore. What? What, what? I learn, I, you know, like I said, Arrow, I'm literally learning about as it goes along. So, I'm not. What if he? Go, what oh, if he goes Flash? No, that's another thing. Yeah, the Flash series is starting up, which was that uh, looks awesome. Yeah, I could. I is someone cast as Captain Cold because I could really see Matt doing Captain Cold. Yes, yes, I know. Even I, I know who. Yeah, Flash has a uh, quite a few villains though, doesn't he? He has like. Yeah, he's yeah. not just Captain Cold. He has like five or six different villains. Yeah, he has a few. Uh, he has Black yeah. Adam. It, yeah, no, he has Black Adam, and I don't know. It's kind of I don't know. I, I can see it now. I'm Captain Cold. I like cold. Cold is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Speak of superhero movies, I was watching the Batman one. You know, with George Clooney in 1997. Oh, don't even mention oh, that. Don't man. mention that piece of... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Crap. It's so funny. Excrement. Arnold Schwarzenegger is Mr. Freeze. Three words from Doctor Who, man. It was shit. <laughs> <laughs> I Did think you, you agree with me on that, so... <laughs> it was. It was totally... Yeah, I know. I know. Why, in the name of anything, would you need nipples on the Batsuit? 
Yeah. I, I like the original, the first two original Batman movies that was directed <laughs> yeah, by Michael Tim Burton. Keaton. Yeah. Yeah, Tim Burton good. was brilliant director. And as much as I hate to be, you know, an ironic guy, you know, because I'm overweight myself. Why did Olivia? Why did Alicia Silverstone show up on that last movie? Look like she needed to be in a Weight Watchers ad. <laughs> it was obvious she didn't bother to work out at all for the role. It was obvious she phoned in her performance. It's like, why was she even on that set? Pretty much everyone did, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> but that's yeah, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad someone brought it up. Yes, Joel Schumacher, I hope you burn in a very slow hell for that. Oh. With Stephen Moffat. No <laughs> free. Oh. No, no, no. Now, I, I keep arguing with, you know, certain people. I'm it, joking. I was joking. I know. At least you yeah, should. Yeah, I have to. Uh, I like Stephen Moffat. It, it's not all bad. It, you know, no. it's, it's more good than it is bad. I will admit this right now. You do have your share of rotten lemons, but so did RTD. Yeah, true. Oh, um, Brian, did you did you know if I tell you about the death count we did for Stephen Moffat? Or what well, he told he said what? Oh, me, Mo, and Graham did a death count of everyone who died in the entire run of Stephen Moffat for Doctor Who. No, yeah. I never heard about that. Go ahead. Oh, I think we calculated it in total, including the the episodes he did for um, Rusty Davis. I think it was forty five or fifty five. I think it was deaths. Was that including all the deaths Rory had? No. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not including all the deaths. That's just including. So count, are you counting death. like the the death that Amy and Rory? That I'm, you mean? Are you counting the death that Amy and Rory had? Because that's technically not a death until they died when they were passed. Yeah, we we did include that, but only after they died in the past. Because okay, they did okay. technically die. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, good point. I'm just curious. Which was the last one, apart from Amy and Rory, that was an a actual significant character? I can't even really think of one. No, yeah. neither yes. can I. You I'm know, struggling to significant think. enough. You know, the one character I'd like to see get killed off, and, and not because I hate him, but I think it would put weight to it, would be Strax. Yeah, well, I, no. I mean, he's I always going to shut up, but still, no. Oh, no, somebody just walked in the room when you said that. Uh, busted. <laughs> but I, I'm not saying I hate him. I like him. But I think that if they really wanted to have some weight put on Doctor Who before before uh, they want to do away with that character, kill him off. Don't just have him walk away to a sunset or whatever. <laughs> that ship sailed. <laughs> and you see, they had an excellent chance there to do that with a good man goes to war. And then they brought him back. Yeah. You know what they need to do is bring more Santarians into the show along with Strax. Yes, we need an, not, a we need an on screen situation where the two where the, where a Santaran and Strax are having a normal conversation. With that's those what I'd like to see. I'd like to see Strax dealing with a group of normal Santarans. But you said that Strax is slightly more intelligent than a normal Santaran. No, he's from a defective clone batch. No, you said that he was slightly more intelligent or something, apart from that. I did? Mm -hmm. I think so. <laughs> He's a potato head. <laughs> what I'd like to see would be a Sontaran killing Strax, because he is defected. I love the, I do love the scenes where he finally gets to unleash hell on people like they didn't hide. Yeah. Or, uh, no, yeah. The Crimson Horror. Crimson Horror. Yeah. The Crimson Horror. I always get those two mixed up, I don't know why. Yeah, the Crimson Horror, I love that scene. Have you been into the pastries again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go play with my grenades. <laughs> See, I think the only problem with killing off Strax, though, is that Moffat would just clone him and we'd have a new Strax. Very Strax true. That's true. The problem with killing Strax off is that people will complain, similar to how what they did with South Park. They killed off Kenny for a season. People, it was going to be permanently, but people decided to, uh, to have a, a petition against it. it that's well, probably what happened with Strax. So. What? If they bring Strax back from the dead one more time, they're renaming him Rory. <laughs> yes. A good example of why not to kill off your, some of your main cast. Look what happened with Torchwood. There we yeah. go. The doctor said that oh. one of his friends brought Strax back to life. Who did that? 
That's no. the thing. He, he, he kind of woke up a couple days later. It turns out he was in a coma, so. Yeah. That didn't make any sense either. Well, here's an example of ticked off fans. And this is for, you know, the old people out there. Optimus Prime. And the original oh, Transformers. No. Pretty much every movie. Yeah, no, yeah, the, yeah. In the original series, and then they did the animated movie, they killed off Optimus Prime. The fans were so ticked that they brought him back in the following season. Matter of fact, if any of you have made the sad mistake of watching the animated G.I. Joe the movie, that's why, <laughs> they, that's why they didn't kill off Duke in the movie. They changed it so that Duke was in a coma, quote-unquote. All they did was they changed the lines because Duke was supposed to die. But they so feared reprisal from the fans that they changed it. See, being a longtime G.I. Joe fan as a kid, I would have been fine with it because – you know, you can only have those heroes live through so many battles for so long. See, that's yeah, that's exactly See, it. You know, and that's one of the things I think's missing from Doctor Who. You have to have the threat of death. With the threat of death comes <laughs> tension. With the threat of death comes drama. You know, with the threat of death comes genuine threat. If I if I remember correctly, there was an episode written by Stephen Moffat where a character, was, uh, I think it was the Doctor, was saying. Without death, there would be no size to anything. There would be uh, no drama. So I don't know how he can contradict himself like that. You see, that's one, one thing I didn't like about our eighth anniversary special, as I refer to it. You all, you saw a lot of Dalek shooting, but nobody getting killed. Yeah. Hmm. But it was like it was like watching GI Joe. <laughs> the same thing. He was the stormtroopers of the Dalek. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Exterminate the air! Exterminate the air! This? No, that was uh, Time of the Doctor you're thinking of with the two Straxes and the see-through tank, yeah. <laughs> Is it Bruce Willis that plays um, G.I. Joe? He, he was in the last movie, which I have not yet seen, so... He did, in fact, play G.I. Joe, the original G.I. Joe that the team based themselves off of. Okay, I thought it stood for Globally Integrated Joint Operational Expeditionary Force. It did, but it also was based loosely off of the original 12-inch action figure, G.I. Joe. Oh, okay. I was wondering what... So the two, the two are combined, in a sense. I'd like to see Bruce Willis go up against Strax. <laughs> two potato heads. <laughs> oh, God, you have the potato head versus potato head. There you go. <laughs> Just, um... Just on about that uh, whole whole death thing. Um, in, in this um, Star Wars Episode Seven, do, do you think one of the original characters should should probably die in it? Yeah, I think they all should. I, yes, I, I think they all should too. R two D two. And as a side note about that, <laughs> well, the, the, the guy who played R two D two is dead. So why not? Kenny Baker is dead. I think so. No, he's not. I don't think so. It, as a side note about death, she's really cute. <laughs> um, who is Ryan's it then? One of the main cast was... is up here. One of the main Ryan... cast is dead though. They are? Carrie Fisher's so. dead. No, Carrie Fisher's still alive. Mark Hamill's still alive. Harrison Ford's still alive. Definitely. Might... I know still Those alive. Those are debatable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> matter of fact, I'm looking forward to seeing him in Expendables 3. Matter of fact, uh, according to this, Kenny Baker is alive, kicking and well. He's 79 years old. If, if I, I could uh, address Ryan's question, though, about killing off a major character in Star Wars, Harrison Ford wanted Han Solo to die in Return of the Jedi. I say bring it forward and have him die off in this next movie. I think it would be really... Should die of old age as, Chewbacca should die of old age as a old gray colored giant teddy bear type thing i like I you know like your hair goes gray that's what you have to remember, also you got to remember it would be debatable if peter mayhew could even reprise that role they probably have to bring somebody else in he just recently had surgery on both his knees uh, so he, I, he, I know he's getting around a bit better now but still he, he, if i remember right, he still got a, quite a bit of arthritis when, now when i, I was at uh, megacon last year and i'm going this weekend Peter Mayhew showed up. He got off of the bus, 
he walked up and he sat down at the doors outside of the convention center there, where everyone would hang out to smoke. And I was going to offer him a clove cigarette, which are, I mean, a real clove, the ones that are illegal here that you have to get from, uh, like, Sri Lanka, practically. The jar of And the only thing is, I could tell that the man was so exhausted, and I realized that as soon as he got through those doors, he was going to get mobbed, and I decided not to bother him. And it's really funny because I think that he got the idea of what was going through my head because he just nodded to me. Oh, yeah, I keep hearing he's a really, really nice guy. I've, I've personally met him myself, and uh, he, he is pretty, pretty uh, down to earth. I, as a matter of fact, if you want a thrill and you can find these on YouTube, go look for the. What was that? Oh, go look for the Star Wars scenes before they edit in the sound effects where he's saying the lines as Chewbacca. <laughs> you suddenly no. see Chewbacca start saying something, and it's like, you know, this guy with a perfectly English accent, you know, and he's saying something like, I think he's completely mad. What? <laughs> <laughs> he have actual lines and then that was to what uh, the others knew to respond or did he just make crap up since they were voicing it over with sounds anyway? No, as far as I know, he was saying lines and then they edited him over later with the sound effect of, you know, Chewbacca. That's true. They, they did the same thing with David Prowse, as a matter of fact. He would say something and then they edited it over with James, you know, James Earl Jones' voice later. Matter of um, fact, that's how they kept the secrecy on Luke Skywalker you know, and Darth Vader being his father, because the line they gave um, David Prowse originally was, Obi-Wan killed your father. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it would be cool if Han Solo was to die in a battle against Boba Fett. Matter of fact, you're getting a whole new origin story movie on Boba Fett. Oh, yeah, nice. I've, because... heard, I've heard rumors that what they're going to do is kill off episode two Boba Fett and then have somebody pick up the armor and yeah. become Boba Fett. Exactly. And That's what I'm hearing. Just look at um, Boba. I mean, Boba Fett is an icon, and he is known for being a badass bounty hunter. But think about it. What did he truly do through the trilogy? Capture Han Solo, fall into Sarlacc pit. <laughs> <laughs> and look how did much he- of a badass... Look how much of a badass he was in the Robot Chicken movies. Look, it just needs to <laughs> writing enough that I'll have nothing to do with Seven anyway. I like the Robot now Chicken Corabon movies. Can't the even sad, be Corabon. The sad part is Boba Fett's story reads like the common guy on the planet Earth. You know, he, he has his glory days, then he falls into a hole which we call marriage. Oh. In Star Wars, it was metaphorically called the Sarlacc Pit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Is that a, wait is that a, a direct quote from George Lucas? <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Dr. Freedom, are you saying Gina is nicknamed the Sarlacc Pit? No, no, no. That, oh. Was, oh. no that, was, that was my first wife. She was she was a hole. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a filthy, disgusting hole with tentacles. No. Oh, oh man. sorry. Oops, I lost it for a moment there. But getting and back the, to Doctor Who. <laughs> I'll also bring this up briefly because I didn't get a chance to because I've been off at work for two weeks. There's been a rumor shooting around that, you know, of course, we saw the casting of Samuel Anderson as quote unquote Danny Pink, and whoever came up with that name should be taken out in the street and beaten to death. Danny Pink? Yeah, well, oh well. Sounds like something from a Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, there's rumors going around he could possibly be the master. Who has thoughts on that? No. I don't think so either. Myself. No, no way. Even what's his name from from EastEnders should be the master. Oh, Dan, uh, Charles Dance is the latest one I keep hearing coming up. I yeah, want that guy be. from EastEnders to be because I could actually see him with the beard and everything. Oh, the other yeah. guy. Anyone know his name? Because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, Stephen, um, something. Uh, Shepherd. Yeah, Stephen. Yeah, Stephen Shepherd. Stephen, yeah, Stephen John Shepherd was it? I I want I want to see him as the master. I, I know, I saw his pictures, and he looks sinister. He does, like, even with the beard. I could, he was sinister in EastEnders when I was, what, like, what, before he died. But um, but with the beard, he looks even more sinister. Okay, yeah, I, I could see him doing it. Like I said, the other the other name that keeps popping up is Charles Dance, but that was just the latest rumor flying around. I've got, I, I keep telling people, <clears> there's <throat> nothing to substantiate it. 
I, I think it's just fans grabbing at straws at this point. Do you really think the master is coming back? Yes. Um, as far as I know, yes. I keep hearing yes. But like I said, I've got nothing definite on it. But it's apparently being called the worst kept secret of the show at this point. But at the same time, they've taken us down the false road before. Peter Capaldi was one of the worst kept secrets because I, I, people were people said that it was Peter Capaldi for like day one when they said that there was going to be a new doctor. No, it was but down the, between Ben Daniels, Peter Capaldi, and uh, one other actor, and I can't remember his name. Yeah, but like people said that it was Peter Capaldi, and I disagreed because I thought it was going to be somebody younger than Matt when he started. But I, that would be that'd be weird. But I actually I, really do like the idea of Peter Capaldi now. I, I would have liked it to be Jack Daniels myself. <laughs> <laughs> what, a giant bottle? Or you mean the actual person? <laughs> well, well, then you're ensuring there's going to be a companion strangle. Right. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> oh, God. So, oh, no, to oh, ask a question. Yeah, I'm 2,000 years old. <laughs> to ask a question that kind of ties into what we've been talking about. Do you think this time around we're actually going to get some deaths? I'm yes. hoping so, because from what they're describing, they are finally going down the dark path. I just can't picture them actually bringing back the Master as long as Stephen Moffat is in there, because he will never let any enemy be a challenge for the Doctor. I know, I think this Master will be a challenge. Hang on a second, Ross, go ahead. The thing is with Moffat is that he lies too much and he lies to you to hate him, to hate other things, yet he gives it to you. The whole 50th anniversary thing was sort of an example of how much he lied to us, yet delivered. So I really don't, I really wouldn't trust the word that Moffat says. I bet he's got the master down, the Rani down. I bet he's got loads of people down. He's ready to throw eyes. I can't argue with that. He did deliver because he executive produced, you know, an adventure in space and time. Hmm. And, <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta agree with that. You yeah. just sort of, seg you, they, you no, just they, sort of. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you, you just sort of segued me there because um, I was just thinking, what if David Bradley was the master? I don't know. You know, David Bradley's still gonna be doing Game of Thrones. Plus, hmm. he's a busy guy now. Besides, we need David Bradley to pop on as the first incarnation of the Doctor. Oh yeah. yes, I wish they had gone down that road. I really wish they had. Yeah. Because they've done it before. They did it with Richard Herndall back in the Five Doctors. Yeah. In Croatia, I think it is. Yep. And so, I would love to see the... I know it'll never happen, but I would love to see the TARDIS materializing in London somewhere around 2006. Mickey Smith hears it. He comes running out, and then the First Doctor comes out. He starts harassing the First Doctor, who promptly calls him an imbecile and hits him over the head with his cane. <laughs> now stop bothering me. Even oh, sure. no degrees of You'd that. have some fun words for Rose too. You know, I, yeah. I know it would never happen, but I would love to see the the master uh, steal another body, and the person I would love to see come and take up the role of the master would be Mark Shepard, who was on uh, what was it? Well, he's been on Doctor Who as Kent right. Number Delaware the Third. He was yes. on. That guy's everywhere. He's been yeah, on he Supernatural is. as Crowley. He's been oh, on. Oh, bro. He was on he was, Firefly. He was, he was on Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica, yes. X Files, an episode of Slides. I, I had. Oh, uh, well, go ahead. I just got the worst image ever. When, when the master stealing bodies came up, why did I think if the master accidentally stole the body of Strax? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that would be weird. He can regenerate then, now, so he doesn't really need to steal bodies. But maybe he then, could be a body thief in the other way and, you know, steal them from cemeteries for macabre experiments. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Rose, a rubbish beard. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to get the beard back. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a return of the meddling monk. I would oh, yeah. love to see that character back. Yeah. Oh, just for way oh, even if it's just one episode, I'd love to see him back. Hell, the Ronnie, one episode. Mm. See her back. I just of fact, Kate O'Mara, Kate O'Mara already said she'd happily appear. You know, and it would be nice to do a regeneration. 
Mm. I just thought of something. That if... Uh, oh, never mind. No, I just realized. Oh, that bad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay, so we've, we've covered all our spinoff ideas, but like I said, the, the reason why I did this, in over the course of two weeks, since I put out that one video, got close to 14 submissions. Yet, the BBC which has endless, well, almost endless, well, not quite endless resources, according to the latest reports, can't come up with one. See, that's the, that's the thought that I, that I was saving for this, the end of this podcast. It's you why know, they should ask fans to write they, some episodes. Basically, what we, what the moral of the story is, is the fans are better than Stephen Moffat. Na, 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 na. Yes. I'm not Stephen them off it. I'm just talking the BBC in general. The thinking of taking down the B- BBC Three um, when it doesn't even make sense. Like going from BBC One, BBC Two to BBC Four, will BBC Four become BBC Three or what? I'm not sure how they're going to do it. BBC Three will go exclusively online, and you see what they're trying to do is they're trying to cash in on the latest fad in trend towards online streaming television. Well, you have to pay for it. You see, that's the, that's the double whammy. You know, you folks over in Great Britain, you're already paying a license fee. Now they want you to pay, go watch BBC Three. Well, yeah, the problem is, I'm thinking, will they do it over BBC iPlayer, which is free, or will they have... Will yeah, they oh, make... sorry, you're right. It's, it's going to be BBC iPlayer. I'm sorry. I oh, forgot. good, I was about to say. But I've, I was reading something on Twitter saying that they're going to try and get... Uh, Family Guy and American done on, on BBC Three because that's something that people like watching after you know all the comedy shows and all the reruns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see, because um, Netflix is doing going to be doing their own television program. Matter of fact, they already are, you know are funding it. They've it's... already got quite. They've already got that Turbo animated series, and I've seen that one. That um, their own. They've own, they've what's that? I don't know. They've made some their own TV shows, haven't they? Yeah, they've already got uh, Hemlock Grove. Um, Pretty good. They're, um, I haven't seen it yet. Lady Gallifrey has. She snuck off. Sorry right, if you heard that. <laughs> I didn't hear all that she said. She said, it's good, it's good, watch it. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Plus, uh, Ripper Street is being resurrected on an online yes. service. Plus, the bonus is, a couple months after it airs on the online service, they're going to air it on BBC One. Fair enough. Yes. That way they split the cost. <clears throat> Probably the reason why BBC won't put that much money into a Doctor Who spinoff is because despite the amount of money it's making, they probably don't have any faith in Doctor Who just because it is, it's a show that has been cancelled in the past. Yeah, also you have to look at the fact that up till Day of the Doctor aired, there was a slight drop in ratings across each episode of Series 7. It, it yeah. wasn't huge, but it was slight. It was noticeable. It, well, it could since, be this is, since Netflix is, in fact, on the Internet, and we know what keeps the Internet afloat, they really do need to create a sister run called Pornflix. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like it's called the Internet. That's just the yeah, Internet that's, that's just the Internet full stop. <laughs> Called well, Pornflix Bill. could Pornhub. have a, uh, a classic design to it so that when you log into it, it looks like Netscape Navigator. <laughs> the internet oh. was designed so that people could anonymous, oh, anonymously oh. insult each other over their opinions and watch porn. <laughs> well, there are, um, I know what's happening with the BBC at the moment because we're talking to people who work there, but I don't really want to say it here unless you want to cut it out. It, it'll have to be you cut out. Some, you just remind <laughs> me of that song, The Internet is for Porn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, guys, I think we've run the gamut here. We went from Doctor Who, the Star Wars, the G.I. Joe, <laughs> back right. to Doctor Who. <laughs> then we went on to porn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay, porn. Hey, hey, what, what was that, hun? What was it? Oh, they had the gates on for one series. Well, I thought, was that an online show? 
I honestly don't remember. No, it was a network show. It just it didn't last more than one season. Okay, she was asking. Bring that back. That was pretty good. Too. Okay, so we've run the gamut here tonight, and plus we're coming up on about well, hour and a half, two hours. So, any other thoughts? I'm going to go around to the, get your final thoughts and farewells, and then we'll bring this session to a close. All right, let's start with Bill. Well, in the words of Toad from the X-Men, at last we shall reveal ourselves to the X-Men. At last we shall have revenge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ross? Um, yeah, I hope there is a spin-off series very shortly. I hope there's one in the works. But if they do it, make sure they do it online, because I think they're more beneficial online than they would on TV. Okay. Nightwing? In the words of Forrest Gump, life is like a box of chocolates. Okay, and you never know which ones are the x lax Yes. And if it's uh, chocolates. <laughs> and you don't know which one is Stephen Moffat. Uh, by chocolate, you mean Hershey squirts? I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, AJ? Uh, brilliant ideas, and uh, thanks for listening to mine. Okay, Josh? Uh, I think I just want to close by saying I can't understand why the BBC doesn't realize they've got a great cash cow, and then instead of trying to spread it thin like they've been doing in the past couple of years or – put out subpar scripts why aren't they trying to focus more on making doctor who their 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 flagship show very true because you know it, it, they should be doing a spin-off right now that way it would help carry over the gap between the old doctor you know the the months we have to wait for doctor who we'd have something else to watch sure okay ryan in the words of michael gray this has been going on for too long let's wrap it up <laughs> I know. Sometimes I halfway expect to see so you know one of, one of the pythons suddenly come walking across the screen, going, "That's it. This has gotten far too silly." Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, Colonel. Okay, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and bring this session to a close. Uh, once again, I want to remind everyone: Omega Files will not be on on the twenty second. We will be back on the 29th if something else doesn't go wrong. Super sad. <laughs> I. I know it is seriously sad because I work for a bunch of slave driving maniacs. By, by the way, Dr. Freedom, I've been thinking of doing something and I'd actually like to get you involved in it. Okay. Um, you know how basically your Dr. Who news thing is you basically reading the articles and talking about the different things going on. Well, I was thinking of doing something very similar to that, but well, shall we say very uncensored. Because, frankly, I don't care. I'm not going out. I, my goal isn't to piss people off. But That's I don't Mo's really job. care if I piss people off either. That's Mo's job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Howard Stern made a living out of ticking people off. True. Yep. Okay, well, matter of fact, I am going to incorporate partially, you know, the news idea. As a matter of fact, this is upcoming. Don't expect it within, like, the next two or three days. But the beginning stages of Dr. Freedom and Eric are in motion. That's another reason why I wanted to bring up spinoffs, because um, it will be loosely, well, extremely loosely affiliated with the Doctor Who universe. And like I said, I've already got a group of volunteers to do voices. i got a volunteer <laughs> to do music. I've got a volunteer who wants to do concept art. So it looks like we got a good shot at getting this done. It'll probably be this summer. You couldn't like wait another voice. minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to voice somebody on the Doctor. I would like to voice somebody in your project. Well, like I said, let me see, because I still got to write parts for like one or two other people right now. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see. My character, Spanner. Spanner? Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that's the name of the character. I, was, I forgot to mention that. Well, we already have an engineer right now, and I don't oh. give away too much. Let's just say this engineer is going to be a, quite a take on a couple different series. <laughs> Bill knows I like referencing people. Yeah, Bill knows what I'm talking about, so he here he knows who it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bill's one of the guys helping me put this thing together. So, Well, oh. guys, until um, two weeks from now, enjoy the rest of your evening, your day, or whatever it is where you are. 
This is Dr. Freedom signing out. Please come back when we will once again open the Omega Files. <laughs> <laughs>